Sometimes in life you just have to laugh. And me fishing this lake on April 1st was somewhat hilarious. Oh! Oh, tell me! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! 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 What's up, Yins, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're gonna spend some time updating one of my previous videos. So the topic for discussion today is regarding largemouth and smallmouth bass. Now, bass in general are such a sought after game fish in all of North America. And in the state of Pennsylvania, we have an excellent fishery. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on resources such as these that'll help you guys learn more about the fish and the biology of the fish, which will translate into helping you catch more of them. In addition to that, we're gonna talk about standard gear like rod and reel combinations, line, and that sort of thing, which will hopefully give you an idea of the type of gear that I use. In addition to that, we're gonna focus on techniques and lure combinations that'll help you catch largemouth and smallmouth bass throughout the entire year here in the state of Pennsylvania. So I'm looking forward to this episode and hopefully you guys find something new and beneficial that will translate into your fishing. Okay, I want to start off with talking about resources that are available to help you guys learn more about the fish. So first and foremost, there are a lot of books and magazines out on the market like In Fisherman, Largemouth Bass, Fill and Stream, Strategies to Catch Fish, and also in fisherman magazines. Now these, in a combination of these, will give you a lot of different pieces of information regarding the fish, what they eat, where they live, how they spawn, and where you guys can catch them throughout the entire year. So first and foremost, check out these types of printed articles, books and magazines, and they will help you learn a little bit more about largemouth and smallmouth bass. Secondly, I wanna talk about television. There's a lot of good TV series out there like Bill Dance and Hank Parker and In Fisherman with the Linders. Those types of hour weekly shows can jam pack an episode full of information that'll help you guys find a new lure, a new technique, or just some general information about the fish that'll help you guys learn something new. Third and finally, I wanna talk about the internet. So the internet is obviously a wealth of information. But in particular, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission has a pretty awesome website out there that will actually help you guys locate a specific species of fish and it'll tell you exactly what the best lakes are throughout the state are for you to target those fish. In addition to that, you can go out and you can read their biology reports and you can get an up-to-date report on any specific lake in your area and it'll tell you exactly what the numbers are through the electrofishing. There's also a lot of good articles and there's a lot of good information out there that'll help you guys, again, learn more about the biology of the fish so that you can kind of tweak your techniques to catch more of them. Now, there are a number of bass fishermen across the country. As a matter of fact, I think the statistic is 300,000 bass fishermen for every one muskie angler. So a lot of you guys know about these fish and how to catch them. However, it's important to understand the fish and how they operate before you can go out there and tweak techniques and produce more fish. Okay, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about Pennsylvania's top bass lakes across the state. Pennsylvania breaks these out into three different categories, typically reservoirs that are greater than 500 acres, reservoirs that are between 50 and 500 acres, and then anything else like flowing water. So the top lakes in Pennsylvania for largemouth and smallmouth bass are as follows. For largemouth bass, 15 inches and longer. The large reservoirs that are greater than 500 acres are as follows. Beltsville Lake, Lake Wilhelm, Marsh Creek Lake, Knox and Mixon Lake, Raystown Lake, Shola Marsh Reservoir, and Yellow Creek Lake. 
Medium reservoirs between 50 and 500 acres. Cannonsburg Lake, Cross Creek Lake, Green Lake Reservoir, Lackawanna Lake, and Pincott Lake. And of course, Lake Erie with Hamilton Lake and Prescott Isle Bay. Smallmouth bass 15 inches or longer. Large reservoirs greater than 500 acres. Lake Wallenpawpeck and Lake Erie. And of course, many flowing waters that are rivers such as the Allegheny River, the Clarion River, the Delaware River, French Creek, Juanita River, the mighty Susquehanna River, and the Yockagany River. Now there's obviously a lot of lakes that were not on the list that we didn't talk about. You have your Pimatumings and your Lake Arthurs, and you have your Lake Glendale. There's a lot of bigger lakes out there that just didn't make the list. However, there's a lot of smaller lakes out there that hold a lot of numbers of bass, largemouth and smallmouth, and they carry a lot of five, six, seven pound fish in them as well. So I fish a lot of these smaller impoundments. I go down to Loyal Hannah, I go down to Keystone Lake, I fish Twin Lakes in Greensburg. I also do a lot of fishing out in the Mount Pleasant area, out towards that area. I hit Bridgeport Dam and Acme Dam, and I fish Green Lake Reservoir, all of which have good numbers of largemouth bass, and they have five to six to seven pounders in there. You just have to throw the right bait at the right time to get those fish to eat. Bottom line is, use the tools that are online to put yourself on a really good bass water. Also check the biologist reports out at your local areas so that you can put yourself in a good position to catch more largemouth and smallmouth bass. Okay guys, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the standard equipment that I use to fish largemouth and smallmouth bass here in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, first and foremost, before we get started, I want to give you a few tips. So whenever I'm looking at bass rods, first thing I look at, the longer the rod, the longer I can cast. The shorter the rod, the more accurate that I can cast. So that kind of plays into the selection that I use, depending upon if I'm fishing cover, like weed edges or shorelines or boat docks, or if I'm shooting out to open water. Another factor that really forces me to decide what type of rod and reel I'm going to use has to do with the type of rod. So there's graphite and there's fiberglass. Graphite is often a lot lighter and it also has a lot more sensitivity. So you can feel those fish biting your lure or biting the bait much, much easier. However, the trade-off is that fiberglass is heavier, but it's also stronger. So if you're fishing for bigger fish, you may want to go with a fiberglass rod if you don't mind the less sensitivity because you're going to have the reassurance that that rod is going to be stronger. Okay, another factor in determining which rod I use has to do with power versus action. The power of the rod a lot of times comes in light, medium, or heavy. And the power is really going to dictate you know, the width of the rod and how strong it is overall. So the heavier the power, the stronger the rod is. Now action, action is a little different. Action depends on how far the rod tip will bend based off of pressure. So you're talking about extra fast, fast, or moderate, or slow. Fast action rods are suited for heavier baits. Slow action rods are suited for lighter baits. Okay, with all of this said, I standardize on my bait cast rod and reel combo, which is an Abu Garcia Silver Max. So if you guys can see that. This is a six foot, six inch rod, medium power, and I have one fourth to five eighths ounce lures that I can throw on this. I can also put between eight and 15 pound test on here, which translates into 20 to 30 pound braid. The rod and reel combination again is graphite. So it's lighter and it's more sensitive. The reel gear ratio is 641, so it's a high speed reel. So I can throw bigger baits with this and I can bring them in much more quickly. This is such a great product and it works very, very well for fishing largemouth and smallmouth bass. I highly recommend the Abu Garcia Silver Max combos for $79.99 if you guys want a good, solid bait cast combo. One last thing to say about the bait cast. Notice how the eyelets are upright that actually gives you additional power and leverage when you set the hook on a fish and it makes this a really, really good option when you're going out bass fishing. Okay, I wanna talk about one additional option for bass fishing. 
I have here a Shakespeare Ugly Stick, which I just purchased the other day. This Shakespeare Ugly Stick is again, six foot six inches, and this is a medium action, which I can get six to 15 pound monofilament, which translates into 20 to 30 pound braid on this reel. In addition to that, the gear ratio is five to one. So it's a little slower than my Baycast reel combo, which means I'm gonna throw smaller lures with this. However, this rod is actually a combination of aluminum. So this rod, they make these products to make them indestructible. So you can jam these in your car door, you can step on them, you can bend them, and they will not break easily. So these are awesome options when you're talking about fishing for bass in the state of Pennsylvania. The only other thing to say about a combo like this is that the eyelets are a little bit bigger on these rod and reel combos. And the reason for that has to do with a bait cast reel, you have one point where that line's coming off. On a spinning reel like this, you have multiple spots where that line can come off the reel, which requires a bigger eyelet. Also, the eyelets are on the bottom, so you're gonna get a little less leverage when you're setting that hook. Regardless, these are solid options for catching fish. I highly recommend the Shakespeare Ugly Stick, especially the GX2s. And again, you guys can pick these up for 30 bucks at Walmart, or you can get uh, the standard is about $50 at Dick's or Field & Stream, um, depending upon deals that are going on that week. Take a look at the Ugly Sticks. They'll, they'll catch you a lot of fish and they'll last a really long time. Okay, so the final thing we're gonna talk about is seven different techniques in lure combinations that'll help you guys catch more large and smallmouth bass throughout the year here in the state of Pennsylvania. So number one, we're gonna talk about the skirted jig. Now a skirted jig looks like that, and I have that tipped with a Senko. There are many different colors and there are many different versions of this type of bait. The skirted jig is the undisputed champion of the year round bait category because they catch bass in 40 degree water and they catch bass in 90 degree water. They catch bass off of grass, off of rocks, off of wood, and they catch them in open water. You can fish these things in two feet of water or you can drag them off the bottom in 40 feet of water. In the winter time, you can hop a brown jig craw in a combination off of rocky banks and you can catch fish. You can also take a one ounce jig head and you can flip it into pockets of weeds. No matter what the cover, the depth or the season, jigs will help you catch bass 365 days a year here in the state of PA. Number two is crankbaits. Now you can use crankbaits like this, like grandma's or crankbaits like the rattling rogue, or you can go into the rebels and use the little bluegill imitation crankbaits with the square bills. These are phenomenal baits. Bottom line is crankbaits are the number two option for you guys to catch fish year round in Pennsylvania. And here's why. If it wasn't for jigs, crankbaits would probably hold the crown for the best year round bait. By changing your crankbaits with the seasons and the water conditions, you can always find bass willing to bite. In winter, slender profile cranks with flat sides and a subtle wobble reign supreme. As the water warms up though, moving the baits with a wider wobble and more aggressive retrieves will help keep the fish biting. Okay, the third option or the third technique is jerk baits. So jerk baits like the Cabela's Mean Angry series or even the old school Suix, these little plastic ones, these are awesome options for you guys to fish year round. A lot of guys will say, I don't fish jerk baits in summer. However, you can fish jerk baits over pockets of weeds or in open water, and there are many different applications that'll help you guys continue to catch fish. The only comment about jerk baits in the summer is you cannot rip these too quickly. So check out jerk baits year round. They work when the water's cold and they work when the water's warm. Jerk baits are your third best option to catch bass in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, the number four best option for you guys to catch bass in PA is the finesse worm. So there's many different types of worms out there. This just has to be a custom Senko. So even though finesse worms don't offer a gaudy action or exciting appendages, they offer one characteristic. They get bit all day in any condition, anywhere bass swim. For that reason, they're one of the most effective year-round plastics.
In cold water, drag one on a Carolina or a shaky head. In warm water, twitch one weightless around boat docks and vegetation. In deep water, nose hook one on a drop shot rig or whatever the lake throws at you, a finesse worm will generate more strikes. Okay, number five technique and or bait, and it's crayfish. So Pennsylvania has a number of lakes that have crayfish as a forage. Bass love crayfish. Bottom line is you can take these types of rage craw tails or any specific crawfish bait that you guys like, you can take them, you can fish them on a Texas rig or anything like that, and they will catch fish all year round. Okay, number six is a swim bait. Now swim baits are relatively new to the game over the last five to 10 years. However, they can be absolutely deadly. And what I'm showing you right there is the Big Bite Suicide Shad. These baits offer multiple varieties and ways to fish them. Essentially, you guys can take this and you can fish this on an underspin. You can fish it fast or you can fish it slow. Additionally, you can take and you can fish these on a jig head. So you can fish these or troll these in open water, or you can pop them in and out of structure like weeds and rocks and stumps and wood. Bottom line is swim baits like this offer you a much different action from the crank baits and the jerk baits. And they also come with different scents like garlic and different attractors. These baits are gonna give you Another option to fish them in shallow grass or shallow areas and produce more fish. Okay, the last bait that I wanna talk about, and I know Corey, you're gonna be excited about this, and that's lipless crankbaits. So any of the rattle traps like the Bill Lewis or the Tony Grant series, or you know the, the small Cordell's that you get from Walmart, any type of lipless crankbait. Um, Cabela's has this really new awesome one called the Sidekick and you can see it has blades on it, extra blades. So these are fantastic options to fish for bass early season when you guys can kind of bounce these or rip them slow or move them like jigs in the water. You know, you can essentially cast it and just pop it off the bottom and this will come up and it'll do its thing. They're loud, they're obnoxious and they catch fish. These are an excellent tool to cover water. Same with the swim baits. And part of the goal is to cover as much water as humanly possible in order to locate these fish. So baits like these are gonna help you guys locate that additional fish and catch more of them. Okay, I wanna talk about three other baits here. These are honorable mention baits, ones that you should check out. So there are creature tubes that are essentially made by Gary Yamamoto. I was told about these recently, and hopefully you can see those. They make a wide variety of colors and you can primarily fish these on a Texas rig. So they're weedless. These are great options. Not many stores carry them. I know Bass Pro Shops out in Harrisburg do because I just saw them out there yesterday. So check out the Gary Yamamoto tube and the creature baits. Number two, good old fashioned spinner baits. Never, ever, ever roll out a good old fashioned spinner bait. You can slow roll them early in the season when the water's cold with double Colorados, or you can burn them like crazy in the summer when the water warms up. Spinner baits produce a lot of fish. And lastly, one of the newer baits I wanna talk about for big, massive bass, and that is the Chaos Tackle Mini Medusa. There are reports of many different people catching a lot of fish on these. These are small enough in profile to where a bass would eat them, and the bigger fish are gonna see these, especially during the spawn, and they may throw a fin and attack them. I am planning on throwing these baits at the end of May, which is very soon, into early June, to see if I can't get a largemouth to attack one of these. So these are producing massive, massive bass throughout the entire country. I highly recommend that you guys take a look at the Chaos Tackle Mini Medusas, and you start throwing these for largemouth and potentially smallmouth bass at your local lakes. All right, I just wanna summarize. So we talked about resources and we talked about information regarding the fish from a biology standpoint that'll help you guys learn more about them and catch more fish. In addition to that, we covered rod and reel combinations in line. And we also talked about many different baits and many different techniques to catch fish in Pennsylvania all year round. These techniques have worked very well for me and hopefully they translate and help you guys with your fishing. If you guys like what you're seeing, please feel free to like the video. 
If you like the content overall, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate your time and hopefully you guys learned something new from this episode. If you guys want to see something in particular, feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to get you a video on it. Thank you guys very much. Take care.